Hello, welcome to Resale Coder. In this tutorial, you are going to learn how to create local saves in Unity and it will look something like this. When we are going to launch the game, we'll be able to generate new data. They are going to be displayed in these text fields and then we can save this data, right? We can stop playing the game, we can play again and then we can load the data from the hard drive. Making games is exciting, but it's also a lot of work. Create games more quickly when you plan your week and track your time with Week Sweep. Start saving time now and get the app from the link in the description. Alright, so we have a brand new Unity project and inside it we have one scene which contains a game controller and also a canvas which has nice buttons and text fields so that I don't have to bore you with creating this UI. This game controller game object already contains one script called game data and when we check this script out in Visual Studio, you are going to see that it contains just simply game integer and game string. These are not yet saved to the drive, we need to save them and that's what this tutorial is actually about. It's about taking these game variables and turning them into saved variables which we can access and write to the hard drive or to some other type of storage depending on what platform your Unity game is running on. Then we have also inside this game data glass we have text fields, so text integer and text string. We have a method for generating new data but this is really not, this doesn't have anything to do with the actual saving of the data, you can save whatever you want, but hey, I'm just showing you what we are going to be dealing with in this particular tutorial, before we actually dive into the actual saving of the data. So we are generating a random integer, then we are converting and saving it inside the game integer property, then we are taking this game integer which we have just generated and we are converting it into a base64 string inside of this line and then we call show data which shows the data inside the UI. Alright, so now that we have this game data class sorted, let's go and create save script. So right click, we want to create a new C sharp script, its name will be save script and also we want to create a new C sharp script and this one's name will be simply save. First up, let's open up save. It's not gonna be a subclass of mono behavior and it's not going to implement these methods. And it's going to have an attribute which will be serializable from the namespace system. So system.serializable. And we are going to have two variables or actually fields inside this save class. Their name will be public int saved integer and also public string saved string. Alright, so as you can probably guess by now, we are going to turn these game integer and game string from game data to the saved integer and saved string inside the save on the drive. That's it for this save class, that's really all there is to it. And now let's dive into save script. So let's open it up, save script. This mano behavior save script will require a component of type, so type of game data. And we are going to have two private fields inside here. First one will be private game data with an original name game data, it will just not be capitalized, and private string, its name will be safe path, and then inside the void start, we are going to set the game data to be equal to get component of type game data, and we can be sure that there is a component attached to the game object because we are requiring uh, requiring a component of type game data with this attribute up top and then we are going to set safe path to be equal to application dot persistent data path and this is different for each platform but 
that's where we actually want to save our game saves, right? This is the path that we can use with our game regardless of the platform. And we are going to concatenate game save dot save, for example, it doesn't really matter what the file type will be. This script will not implement void update, but we are going to have a public void save data method. Inside it, we need to create the save, which will be actually saved to the drive. So var save, and it will be equal to a new instance of our save class, which is serializable. That is really important because we need to be able to serialize it in order to save it to the drive. And we are going to get this save, we are going to actually create a new instance of save. And the saved integer of our save will be equal to game data dot game integer and co uh, comma because we are using an object initializer here. And a saved string will be equal to game data and obviously game string. All right. Don't forget to put a semicolon after the curly brace. So this is our save object. Then we are going to declare create a binary formatter. And we are going to instantiate a new binary formatter. All right. And we need to import or use this namespace. After that, we are going to be using a using statement. So using and we are going to be using var file stream and which will be equal to file. We need to again be using the system.io namespace. So file dot create uh, create if I can spell correctly now and we are going to create a file at safe path right? That's pretty cool. What this using statement does it is that it opens a file stream. And because we are inside a using statement, as soon as the using statement is finished at this curly brace, it's going to close the stream for us. So we don't have to worry about manually closing streams. If you aren't using a using statement, and you forget to close a stream manually, that stream is not closed and you are actually getting some some type of a memory leak, which is not cool, you want to avoid that. And the best way and the simplest way to avoid these kinds of problems is by using using statements in C sharp. So that is pretty good to know. Inside this using statement, we are going to write binary formatter and we want to serialize and we want to serialize into a serialization stream file stream. And we want to actually serialize our object, which in our case is the save object, which we have just created at the start of this save data method. And then we can uh, just for a good measure, we can debug dot log something to the console. So for example, data saved. Cool, that's it for our save data method. Now let's create a method for loading the data from the drive. Loading the data from the drive is actually the exact opposite of saving data. That is pretty obvious. So let's get on to it now. So public void, or actually not vo vo yeah, void, because we aren't going to return anything from load data, we are just going to assign our variables inside game data to the new values which we are getting from the drive, right? We don't want to return anything from this load data method. So load data. And inside here, we are going to check if file exists. So if file that exists, and the file for which we want to check is at path safe path. So if it exists, we are going to create a new variable of type save, we are going to name it simply save. And then we are going to again, create a var binary formatter. So new binary formatter, right? That's cool. Again, using a using statement. And inside it, we are again going to create a file stream, but a bit differently because we are loading the data, we are not creating it as we've done over here. So we again want to be using a file stream. So our file stream. 
but this time it's going to be equal to file dot open and we want to open the file at safe path and the file mode will be only open because we don't want to open or create we don't want to create new if it's not there we don't want to do anything so we only want to open a file if it's there already if it's not there actually this if statement will not allow us to continue in this block of code so we don't even have to worry about the file not being there when we get to this part of code right and inside this using statement we want to write that safe is equal to binary formatter dot deserialize and we want to deserialize the contents of the file stream but this is going to return a simple object so we need to cast it to our safe class so now everything is working correctly but uh, i have forgotten one parentheses over here so now we are good to go we aren't getting any errors so that is pretty cool and after this using statement we want to write game data and we actually want to assign our saved loaded data to our game data's fields so game data dot game integer is equal to safe dot saved integer and then game data dot game string right is equal to safe dot saved string all right awesome not string all but string cool and then we want to simply show data which is a method on game data class which only shows the data inside our ui as we are writing here inside show data then we can also debug log and write that data loaded and also if the file doesn't exist we can notify us inside the console by writing debug dot warning log warning that save file doesn't exist so we have a method for loading the data we have a method for saving data we have a save and we have a game data class which is actually you probably won't have this game data class you can store your data inside your game however you want but then you need to be able to pass it inside your save script and also to access your game data and assign it from your load data inside the save script right but you are free to manage your game data however you want but when it comes to me i always like to have some kind of a centralized point of my data such as this game data class now let's head back to unity and we are going to drag our new script save script inside our game controller game object then we are going to go to button save and on click will call the save method on our save script on the game controller so save script and we want to uh, call save data and the button load will also call game controller save script but this one will call load data button generate already calls generate new data on the game data class and we should be good to go so now let's launch our simple game here and at first when we press load data we're going to get a warning here inside the console saying that the save file doesn't exist which is true because we are playing this game or game right for the first time when we generate new data right for example three times and stop playing and start playing and then we try to load data nothing will happen because it's not saved but as soon as we generate new data and save it right data was successfully saved we stop playing and start playing again and we load the data we are going to get the data which was present the last time that the data was saved which is how saves should obviously work but let's test it one more time generate new data so 384 and gae something save data 38384 and load data 384 gae the data is the same 
we are good to go. And that's it for this video. Yay! If you don't want to miss more videos like this, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you are gonna be notified about all of my new videos. If this video helped you, give it a like and also share it with others so they are going to learn how to save data locally by using binary serialization in Unity. If you wanna get the code from this tutorial, click on the link in the video description, which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. Follow me on social media and see you in the next video.